When a torque acts on a spinning object, the angular momentum changes. The rate of change of angular momentum is equal to the applied torque. Under the influence of a torque, a spinning object precesses. We have now mastered the three great conservation laws of mechanics. In a world that seems full of change, those three things are the same now as they've always been and always will be forever. Energy, momentum, and angular momentum. But there's something strange about those laws. Isaac Newton, who gave us all of mechanics, never himself thought of the conservation laws. They all come directly out of his great gift to us, F equals MA, but he himself never extracted them. It's almost as if he purposely left something over for somebody else to do. There's always been another small mystery about Newton and his laws. He based his mechanics on three laws, but we only seem to use one of them. Everything we do seems to come from F equals MA. Well, I suspect those two little mysteries are actually related to each other. I think Newton may have had an inkling about conservation, and that's what his third law is really all about. Let me try to explain. Take the case of energy. Energy is never created or destroyed, but it can flow from one place to another. That's called work. Work, remember, is a force acting through a distance. But if there's a force on one body, there must always be the reverse force on another body. That's Newton's third law. And that means when work is going into one body, it's always coming out of something else. And that's the way energy is conserved. Or momentum. Force is the rate of change of momentum. But if there's a force causing the momentum of one body to change, there must be the reverse force acting on another body causing its momentum to change in the opposite direction. And that's why momentum is conserved. And the same is true once again of angular momentum. Torque is equal to the rate of change of angular momentum. But a torque on one body always implies a reverse torque on another. And so angular momentum flows from one body to the other and angular momentum is conserved. Well, our subject for today, once again, has to do with torques and angular momentum. As a matter of fact, I think it's time we had a little talk. <laughs> Hi, mister. Hi. I got a flat tire. You sure do. Can you fix it? Sure. Come back in about a half an hour. Long before there was the bicycle, there was the wheel itself. And long before that, there was simply the foot. Feet transport their bearer under normal conditions and without too heavy a load. About five kilometers per hour. Feet operate by man, woman, or child power. The advance of culture can be traced along the path of rapidly improving systems of transportation. Before humans let their fingers do the walking, they called on beasts of burden. Beasts and burdens differed in different cultures. But from ancient times onward, while those who rode might have been beastly, humans had a way of steadily advancing culture, and increasingly, ways to save time in their endeavors, and wear and tear on their footgear. But no matter how, and how far, human destiny is bound to travel. It really got rolling with the wheel. About 4,000 B.C., 
the Sumerians of Mesopotamia probably invented the wheel. Theirs might have been a tree slice, or maybe flat pieces of wood tied together in a circle more or less. But there's one thing about wheels that hasn't changed since then. Wheels are designed to spin. There's nothing special about a wheel that's not spinning. Forget to hold it up, and it'll fall over like anything else. The force of gravity naturally tips the wheel down. In other words, if the wheel doesn't spin, it has no place to go but down. But a spinning wheel is quite another matter. A spinning wheel has angular momentum. And remember, there's that strange twist when momentum's angular. It's not the force that changes angular momentum. It's the twist. If R cross F equals zero, the angular momentum is conserved. Obviously, not all forces behave that way. For example, to open a valve or to get a wheel rolling, twist is just what's needed. Torque is the twisting force that causes rotation, and it's equal to R cross F. But a spinning wheel is already rotating. It has angular momentum to start with. Now, torque can make that angular momentum change, but in a different way. In fact, now gravity can play a strange trick. Its force is downward, but the torque is sideways. According to the equation, tau equals dl dt, the angular momentum will rotate sideways. And rather than fall down, so will the wheel itself. So in a roundabout way, it's easy to illustrate the fact that a spinning wheel doesn't fall. But beyond this example of life copying animation, what's really going on here? What keeps the wheel from falling? When gravity tries to make a non-spinning wheel fall, the spokes push the top of the wheel outward rather than downward, which creates a component of velocity in the outward direction. The same thing happens at the bottom, but inward instead of outward. And the same thing happens when the wheel spins. Now, however, when the outward velocity builds up, it's at the side of the wheel outward on one side and inward on the other. Each spoke adds its own push at the top, causing a jog at the side. So the net result isn't downward motion. It's sideways. Once the wheel starts going around that way, it's called precessing. A spinning bicycle wheel and a spinning top have much in common. A non-spinning top isn't inclined to balance on its point. On the other hand, a spinning top doesn't tip over onto its side. Instead, gravity produces a different kind of motion. Precession. Whether it's spinning or not, the top acts as if all its mass were concentrated at its center, a point called the center of mass. If the top is tilted, even a little bit, the result is a torque. When this happens to a spinning top, 
the torque nudges the angular momentum of the top around in a little circle. Round and round she goes, with a little bit of friction coming along to cause heating at the point of the top. And of course, whenever heat's produced, a certain amount of energy is lost. That's because heat, which is the random motion of molecules, is itself another form of energy. Everything, absolutely everything on Earth has a certain amount of heat, and therefore a certain amount of energy. And no matter where that energy resides, within a crackling fire, or a crackling flow of ice, or the potential energy of a gyroscope that seems to resist gravity, all energy, no matter its form, is always conserved. That's the conservation of energy. It's a profound law of physics, and so universal it can be seen even in the precession of a toy. Here too, heat's being produced. Some of that energy comes from lowering the center of mass of the toy, which sinks lower as the object's precession gets larger. But despite the loss of energy, rotation continues with remarkable stability. Round and round she goes, and round and round she'll continue to go, until something interrupts the precession. Of course, before something interrupts their precession, tops and toys can precess in the most amazing and amusing ways. But a toy gyroscope, perhaps like the child who plays with one, can grow up to become a mature instrument of science and technology. While this gyroscope may be a lot of fun to watch, it's no toy. And it's not designed to play games. In fact, the tip of its angular momentum vector moves in uniform circular motion with a constant angular speed called capital omega. Capital Omega is the rate of precession. The equations of uniform circular motion say that V, the rate of change of R, is Omega times R. In the same way, Tau, the rate of change of L, is capital Omega times L. So Omega is just torque divided by L. Since a good gyroscope's one that hardly precesses at all, the bike wheel isn't good for navigation. It precesses too much. Why? Torque is R cross F. Since they're perpendicular for the bicycle wheel, the magnitude is R times F. The force comes from gravity. Angular momentum is M times R cross V. All the mass is at the rim, so the magnitude of L is m times the radius of the wheel times the velocity of the rim. Since V is omega r, the precession rate is the distance to the pivot times g divided by the rotation rate of the wheel times the radius of the wheel squared. extremely well. Exactly how well? They're not perfect, of course, because anything made by human hands is subject to tiny imbalances and slight imperfection, mechanical or other. 